All the organisms on earth are divided into five kingdoms or five parts. And these are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Monera and Protista, both of them are unicellular organisms. Monera is prokaryotic unicellular organisms and Protista is eukaryotic unicellular organisms. Other than Monera and Protista, other kingdoms, fungi, plantae and animalia, all of them are multicellular. Multicellular means their body is having more than one cell. And in this video, we are going to talk about the kingdom Animalia. In the kingdom Animalia, we can see variety of organisms. The first and the basic type of organism in the Animalia kingdom is the Porifera. These organisms were formed under the water or under the sea and these are the simplest form of animal. They are sessile animals that means they cannot move. So Porifera is the first phylum of the animal kingdom. The next phylum after Porifera is Cnidaria. They are also formed under water. Some of these Cnidarians can move such as jellyfish. The third phylum of animal kingdom is Tinophora. These are also found under water. Cnidaria and Tinophora, both of them are little more developed than Porifera. The next, the fourth phylum is Platyhelminthes. These are terrestrial animals. Their body is flat. That's why they are also called flatworms. And the fifth phylum is Aschelminthes. These are also terrestrial animals, but their body is round. That's why they are also called roundworms. Next, the sixth phylum is Annelida. Annul means rings. So these animals have rings in their body. That's why they are called Annelida. The seventh phylum after Annelida is Arthropoda. Arthropoda means jointed appendages. So these animals have jointed legs. That's why they are called arthropods. The next phylum after arthropod, the eighth phylum, is Mollusca. Molluscans are identified by their very soft body. The next phylum, the ninth phylum, is Echinodermata. Echinoderm means spine on the skin. So these animals have spiny skin. The next phylum, the tenth phylum, is Hemichordata. These animals are found under the sea. And the last and the eleventh phylum is Chordata. This is the most developed phylum and the members of this phylum have notochord. That's why the name Chordata. There are lots of members of each phylum. Here I have drawn a sample animal for each phylum for you to remember. In the next videos, we will discuss in detail about the features of all the phylums but if you remember each of the pictures the sample pictures of the phylum then you can easily remember the features of that phylum so here we have done a simple introduction to all the phylums now we will look at the symmetry body plan silome etc of these phylums Let's start with body symmetry. Starting from Porifera, 
If we try to find the symmetry of Porifera, we can see that no line on the body of Porifera can divide it into equal parts. So this Porifera is having no symmetry or various symmetry in its body. In the next phylum, Cnidaria, if we look at the Cnidarians from the top view or from the bottom view, we can see that their body is distributed equally from the central axis. This symmetry is called radial symmetry. This is also found in the Tenophora. So both Cnidaria and Tenophora have radial symmetry. In the next phylum, Platyhelminthes, if we draw a line from top to bottom of the animal, the line divides the body of the animal into two equal halves. So this is called bilateral symmetry. It is also found in Askhelminthes and Annelids. The, if we cut the body into two parts, we will get equal parts. It is also found in the arthropods. They also have bilateral symmetry. And in the mollusca, we can also see bilateral symmetry. If we look into the mollusca from the top view and draw a line between, we can get two equal parts. But in case of Echinodermata, we see radial symmetry. That is, their body is equally distributed from the central axis. That is radial symmetry. If we remember the sample animal, we can easily find the symmetry. So the next phylum, that is Hemichordata, if we draw a line between, we can get equal to halves, that is bilateral symmetry, and that is also same in case of Chordata. So in case of Chordata, we can also see bilateral symmetry. In the next video, we will talk about the body plan and the coelomes.